So uh, do you want to do you want to talk about aphids for a minute and touch on uh, on uh, some of the different things that people like to say about uh, how to prevent aphids? I know that uh, a lot of people often say if you get your bricks level above a certain level, um, that will prevent them altogether. Um, uh, it certainly will help make your plant more resistant and produce more secondary compounds to be more resistant to different things, but it's not going to make them immune by any means. Um, do you want to touch a little bit on this? Because you had a really cool post the other day on Instagram about um, some research on culturing and things like that, where they were doing, yeah, I'll let, I'll let you tell us about it. Oh, yeah, no, I, well, I appreciate it. Um, and I do have a, a source if you want me to stream from my... Uh... Yeah, go ahead. I turned it on. Yeah. I, so how does that work? So do I, I can just like sure. share it, share a screen? Yeah, just share a screen and then uh, pick the screen you want. Yeah, here we go. Okay, you can see it? Yep. Yeah, so this is just an intro. I, I, I haven't finished the video itself, um, but I do go over some of the examples from various research reports. And um, uh, yeah, when people mention this, it's sort of surprising. So it's usually in the context of like, you can see, can you see this part <laughs> that I'm waving around? Or no, right? Or can you? I don't know. I always wonder if that's actually possible. Anyways, yeah, so we, here, can this, we can see your okay. mouse. Okay, cool. So, um, so right. So, so bricks level, bricks is the concentration of dissolved solids, and in particular, sucrose um, is what we're dealing with here because it's the most common and abundant plant sugar. And um, bricks is a measurement. Uh, degrees bricks is a measurement of concentration by mass. So we're dealing with something called moles, um, which is sort of a chemistry term that some people might not be familiar with. But um, essentially, like one mole of sugar is like uh, 342 grams of sugar. It's a lot of sugar, the sucrose in particular. Um, and like when people do research on aphid, um, growth and their ability to feed on plants, a lot of times they have been fed artificial diets that aren't even like from plants. Like they're literally just like, uh, you know, in various cases as the technology has gotten better, um, basically they're just large sort of a, um, pouches of sugar water. And usually this is in a molar concentration, which is usually like some level of like liter. So like in, 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 in a, in a SI unit, so one liter is about a thousand grams. So like one mole of sugar is like 342 grams of sugar. That means that if you put one mole of sugar in a thousand grams of water, a liter, that's like 34 bricks of sugar. Is, so, you know, you move the decimal point and here you have like 34%. So it's a 34% sugar concentration by mass. Um, and here we have, right, so like this diagram is, is where I make this like kind of simple equation um, because what we see here is uh, dietary sucrose concentration down here in moles. So like these plant, these uh, aphids, in this case, the pea aphid, um, it's feeding totally fine on uh, molar concentrations of one, which is like 34 percent sugar by weight or by mass. Um, what this actual graph shows, and I can go into in great, greater detail, but essentially as the sugar content ramps up, aphid feeding does uh, kind of taper off, at least, at least um, like feeding per like feeding session, essentially. They still go back and eat more, right? They don't like stop completely. Um, and as you can see, they actually still continue to, to drink it up. But um, this is because sugar is actually not, it's not actually a, a phagorepellent, it's a phagostimulant. Um, aphids love sugar and they process practically all of it. They don't always um, use all of the sugar that they process. However, they void a lot of the sugar, but it does get processed in their gut. Um, and this is, we're of course just talking about aphids here. Um, 
I've heard people say that uh, aphids will like kind of like rot on the stem or they'll shrivel up because of this like osmotic pressure or that it'll rot. Um, but again, like that doesn't make sense to me. And in fact, this report goes out of its way to literally make that point that it's, um, or these various research reports to make this point that it, it literally makes no sense that aphids would be able to feed on um, uh, sorry, <laughs> I've forgotten where I put this actually, but um, yeah, here, so the osmotic pressure of phloem sap is two to four times greater than that of aphid body fluids. So an aphid would be expected to lose water to the lumen uh, of the alimentary tract, the digestive tract, and literally shrivel as they feed. Osmoregulatory collapse is circumvented by downregulation of the osmotic pressure of the gut contents, such that the aphid honeydew and hemolymph, which is their blood, uh, basically, is iso, uh, isosmotic. So, right, so like, I don't get where people are getting this information from. This is, um, this is actually by uh, Angela Douglas, Dr. Angela Douglas, who is a um, plant or uh, insect physiologist, and she's really, um, she's really talented, and she's done a lot of research on aphid feeding uh, in, in, in exactly the capacity to understand how it is that insects, herbivorous insects, feed on plants and um, how to like use that information in a pest management situation. So for anyone who's been told that like aphids don't have the enzymes or whatever, um, just putting it out here, this is actually not the case. Um, specifically, two enzymes are responsible for aphid digestion of high amounts of sugar, um, way more than you would ever really see, or not wait, not totally impossibly possible amounts, especially with fruit, but in like the phloem sieve elements, uh, the brix levels typically don't get this high. Sucrase is one enzyme, and this transglycosidase is the other main enzyme, and these break down the sucrose and, uh, and uh, also break down the, the oligosaccharides after that. And make it way, and then that brings the osmotic pressure down uh, for the aphid, and it survives. And uh, yeah, I just want to leave this quote here on that topic. It says, um, "Dietary sugars are important not only as the principal source of carbon, but also because they are the single most important nutritional determinant of aphid feeding." Right? Um, I feel like that's a pretty solid statement um, to leave on. So. I'd let, I mean, I don't like to take uh, research as dogma. Um, you know, there's, there's always coconuts, no buts, no coconuts, right? There's always coconuts. Uh, there's always something that could come up uh, that could make this not true. Um, but it seems like there's massive support for the idea that uh, herbivorous insects uh, can handle high bricks plants and even are attracted to the higher, healthier plants. And intuitively, this makes sense to me. But I try not to rely on simply intuition. <laughs>